All right, so what I want to share, if we have a uh, remaining time, what I want to uh, share with you is the development after CLIP. You know CLIP, right? But and the t CLIP was published two years ago. And there are many following researchers doing, uh, try to improve or investigate some problems in the language and the visual model. So this is the chart. You can see Clipper was published around oh, three years ago. And uh, there are a lot of uh, following research. Okay. And if we have time, you will see two very, very new papers. This is the uh, mismatch and the 77 tokens. They are so new so that the 77 token was just released five days ago, and uh, the mismatch was just seven days ago. Very, very new paper, and very, very interesting. Okay. So but, uh, let's start from the beginning. Okay. So after clip, okay, someone uh, want to improve it. Therefore, there is a blip. Okay. It's very, so I think when they, coin the term blip, they try to mimic a clip. Okay. So they choose the word. Then what does it mean? It means, okay, when you, um, for example, we have line um, 500, line 300, they are images crossed from the web, web, uh, web, the web. but uh, how about the quality of those captions? This may be a problem, why? When you take a look uh, here, okay, for example, this image, okay, and each text from the web is a week spent at our rent bench house in somewhere. Does this make sense? Is it the proper description for the image? Apparently not. Okay. And you, when you see some other example, this. Uh, it looks like a very ancient uh, house, and uh, the caption is what? Uh, that's what a sign says over the door. Again, it doesn't make sense. It means when we use lion or some other data set, those images and uh, captions are collected, gathered from the web, you need to be careful. Those captions are not uh, human annotated, they are noisy. So how to deal with the problem? It is the uh, um, question addressed by the blip. So this is the architecture of a blip. What they want to do is, okay, in the beginning, they have a lot of web crowded uh, images and uh, captions. And uh, there are also some high quality human annotated images and uh, captions. They put that together so they can train an uh, encoder and a decoder. Encoder means given an image, you want to gen create a, uh, I should say, generate a um, vector to present the image. The decoder means given an image, you can use the image to generate some captions. So that is means the decoder and the encoder. Okay, so then they train the encoder, decoder use all of the noisy and the high quality image text pair. And then they generate a classifier which can be used to tell whether the text and the, the image match to each other. And then they also generate a decoder, which can generate the captures from images. Okay, then here, they only use the high quality image text pairs to generate that. So they can filter out some of the noisy captures. And then because there are some existing methods, they can generate the captures from text, uh, from images, like this one. So if they just apply some measures, for example, GPT or something else, okay, they can 
x the large language model and given this image to generate a syn synthetic uh, caption. So you can compare the raw caption and the synthetic uh, caption. Usually, the synthetic uh, caption will correctly show the uh, content of the image, but sometimes it's, uh, it's worse. For example, this is the case. For this image, this is the original caption, okay? and uh, this is a synthetic caption. If we ask the humans to judge which one is better, then the original one is better. There are more details in the uh, caption and more precise. But uh, this is a relatively uh, few cases, okay? Therefore, in this case, they need to train uh, several network architectures together. First is like clip. This is an uh, image text contrastive learning, okay? This means given the image, okay, they will generate uh, the image representation through vision transformer. And uh, given a caption, they will use another text encoder to so that uh, the vectors in the image space and uh, in the text space, they will like each other. This, that's what the clip did. And uh, they also need to do something is is uh, image text matching. So this is the another task. And also this uh, language model text is uh, here. They need to train the three texts at the same time. So that is the core idea of blip. Okay, so this is the data set. They collect the uh, image and the text pairs from Coco, Visual Geno, SBU, and the uh, conception no captions, and the uh, lion. Okay, some of them are high quality. Uh, data samples from Coco and the virtual genome, and some of them are noisy, the lion, because you know lion crops all data from the web, okay? And then they test the data set on Coco. So let's take a look of what the code, code data set look like. So there are four example images. Given an image, then the we will see a caption, and those c captions are man-made, so the quality is uh, is very high, and the Coco caption that in I should say 2014 the uh, Coco dataset was released, and in the beginning it was uh, object detection segmentation dataset, and one year later some other researchers provide more captions for the dataset. Okay. As a result. Uh, there are more than 330k images and uh, more than one point a million captures and the AV image has five captures. Okay, let's take another um, data set. It's that Flickr 30k. Okay. So this is sample. 30k means there are 30k images and uh, there are five captures per image. So you see two examples here. And uh, there's another data set called no caps. Okay, it's like a cocoa, but uh, the problem is cocoa only address uh, 80 classes. And uh, the researchers thought that it's not uh, diversified enough. So they want to extend the data set become no cap. And let's see some examples. So uh, there are three types. For example, jellyfish. The object uh, was not uh, addressed in Coco. So they, for these t classes, they call it out of domain. The domain means Coco's domain. And the near domain, some objects in the image are available in Coco. For example, men, but uh, some of them are not. For example, the trumpet. Okay. And uh, that also there's in domain, it means every object uh, in the image are covered by the Coco AT classes. Okay, so let's see the result of a blip. So if they uh, use the smaller data set, it means there's no line. 
only the other for the asset. And uh, train the uh, blitz architecture with a uh, captioner and the filter. They generate the faster results. Okay. So it, the table wants to show, okay, the architecture is uh, effective and useful. And uh, with more training samples, although some of them are noisy, they can generate better results. Because what? The split architecture, they will automatically remove the noisy samples and only keep the high, uh, useful high quality samples. And even they use large language model to generate uh, captures if the original captures are not good enough. So that is an uh, interesting improvement. Okay. So I, th I will stop here because I think everybody uh, is here. And uh, let's start our final part of the presentation, okay? okay? If we still have time, then I will go through other slides later.